nearly one in three parents in the US have given melatonin to their teenager, and almost half of parents have given melatonin to a child under the age of 13 to help with sleep. Welcome back to the Sleep and Melatonin series, part three. It's easy to understand why parents might reach for melatonin. It's often advertised as a safe and natural way to support sleep, and every parent wants their child to sleep well. Here in the UK and across Europe, melatonin is only available on prescription. So is melatonin safe for kids? The American Academy of Sleep Medicine recommends that parents talk to a healthcare professional before giving melatonin to children, which I absolutely agree with, but I thought it might be helpful to explain why. Here are six questions that I would encourage you to ask before giving melatonin or any sleep supplement to your child. A doctor will be able to review your child's current sleep habits and rule out sleep issues that melatonin won't solve, such as anxiety or sleep apnea. The symptoms of sleep deprivation can mimic or worsen the symptoms of ADHD, difficulty focusing, hyperactivity, impulsivity. Children with ADHD and autism spectrum disorder are more likely to struggle with sleep than neurotypical children. So it's important to explore sleep patterns in the context of other symptoms. If your child sleeps well, but at the wrong times, they might have a circadian rhythm disorder, which often means that their internal body clock is delayed. In this case, melatonin might help, but finding the right dose and timing is crucial to avoid making things worse. The best solution for a sleep problem will depend on the cause. For more than 90% of sleep problems in childhood, behavioural techniques are the most effective approach. This is especially true for very young children. Good sleep habits are always a good place to start. This could include consistent sleep and wake timing every day, plenty of physical activity outside during the day, a calming routine to wind down before getting into bed. Melatonin is highly unlikely to help a child who's on their electronic device just before bed. As we discussed in part one, light emitting devices suppress the body's natural release of melatonin. For healthy children and young people with insomnia that has no known cause, a 2023 review concluded, melatonin should never be the first choice of treatment for this particular population. Why? Behavioral interventions work better with fewer side effects. On average, across eight studies, melatonin led to no improvements in sleep quality or daytime functioning. Children did fall asleep 18 minutes faster and slept 30 minutes longer, but unwanted side effects were common, including headaches, nausea, red eyes, drowsiness, changes in mood and cognition, and GI problems. To put this into context, interventions simply focusing on earlier bedtimes can increase sleep duration by 47 minutes in healthy children. The authors suggest melatonin is only used when sleep hygiene practices and non-drug interventions, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, have proven inadequate, and only in cases where sleep problems are interfering with daytime function. It's absolutely true that melatonin is sometimes prescribed by doctors for kids, usually for those with neurodevelopmental disorders, such as ADHD or ASD, or sensory deficits. If the issue is the need to reset the body clock, melatonin can help, but light therapy will probably have a more powerful effect. In the US, melatonin is treated as a dietary supplement, so there's no oversight of its manufacture by the FDA. When researchers analyzed the content of 25 brands of melatonin gummies, the form most likely to be marketed for children, the actual quantity of melatonin ranged from 74% to 347% of the quantity on the label. 88% were inaccurately labelled. One contained no melatonin at all. Several contained CBD, which is not approved for any use in healthy children. There's too much uncertainty for me personally to want to take a melatonin gummy or to give it to anyone else. When melatonin is made to look and taste like candy, it's not surprising that kids will want more of it. Pediatric ingestions of melatonin reported to poison control centers in the US increased from 8,000 in total in 2012 to 1,000 per week in 2021. The vast majority were accidental and involved children aged five or below at home. Out of over 260,000 events reported from 2012 to 2021, most children experienced no serious side effects, but 4,000 were hospitalized, 287 required intensive care, and two died. Serious consequences are incredibly rare, but if you do have melatonin in your home, keep it out of reach and in childproof packaging. 
While side effects in the short term are usually mild, studies in animals have shown that supplemental melatonin can delay the onset of puberty, so some experts warn against its use in young children. There have only been a handful of longer term studies looking at the use of melatonin in children for up to three or four years and mostly for those with ADHD. No serious side effects have been reported so far but we don't yet have enough evidence to be able to say for sure one way or the other whether long-term use of melatonin is safe in children. For this reason, the general recommendation is that treatment should be as short as possible. For example, keep a sleep diary and assess improvements after 14 days, and again after three months. Your healthcare provider can work with you to wean them off melatonin. If there are any unpleasant side effects, let your healthcare provider know, and the side effects should stop as soon as they stop taking it. I speak to a lot of adults with insomnia who have unhelpful beliefs about sleep. They believe that things have to be a precise way or their sleep will be ruined. And it's sometimes this anxiety about the right conditions for sleep that fuels the problem. So what happens when we give a child a melatonin gummy every night before they go to sleep? They learn a sleep association. Melatonin isn't an addictive substance. You won't get withdrawal effects if you stop taking it, but I think there's still a risk of developing a belief that you won't or can't sleep well without it, which might cause a degree of psychological dependence. We want to teach our children that sleep is a natural and delightful process, something they can do on their own without relying on external substances. I worry that if a child gets used to taking a tablet or gummy, then if their sleep gets worse in the future, they're more likely to look for stronger pills rather than solving the root causes. So if you are using melatonin, try to combine it with behavioral strategies as well. Regular sleep wake timing, winding down before bed, limiting light exposure. Apply a menu of better sleep strategies rather than relying on a single pill. So quick recap for part three. I agree with the American Academy of Sleep Medicine's recommendation that you speak to a healthcare professional before giving melatonin to children. They can help you answer these questions and anything else you might want to know about melatonin. I really hope this helps. In the next video of this melatonin marathon series, I'll be back to talk about how melatonin is used to tackle jet lag. Thanks so much for listening and sleep well.